Hello, everyone. My name is Larry Taylor. I'm on the Rules Committee of the Democratic Party of Oregon. This is a quick update on activities happening this weekend and how you can participate, whether you are a Democrat or you or whether you are a state central committee member and will be voting on Sunday. Um, actions for this Q4 state central committee uh, meeting. So it would be great if you could attend the roundtable discussion on DPO data management uh, coming up on Saturday. This is where you can express your opinion on these topics, uh, withholding campaign management data, which is also known as the van, from Democrats who run against incumbents, uh, granting more data to incumbents when a waiver is given to challengers. So once in a great while, the, they have historically given challengers access to the data in weird circumstances, but it's been a lesser quality data. Um, uh, so you can comment on that. And then uh, the third one is on whether you think it's appropriate for PACs to be allowing control uh, to control access to the campaign management data for the legislative seats. Um, and this is what is letting them withhold access to incumbent challengers. So on those topics, it would be great if you would weigh in and uh, let the Democratic Party of Oregon know what you think. The session is being moderated by uh, uh, Travis. Uh, it's going to be from 2 to 3 p.m. on Saturday, December 1st at the Pacific Northwest Carpenters Institute, 4222 Northeast 158th Avenue in Portland out by the airport. Not easy to get to uh, if you don't have a car, um, but uh, if you can make it out there, that would be great. If you cannot make it out there, I'm sure Travis would be delighted to have your feedback. Uh, so his email address is travis at dpo.org. So uh, if you can't make it to the event, please weigh in on these issues and email Travis. Uh, if you saw the memo that was passed around explaining why Rule 13 had not appeared on the agenda, um, yes, that is still making its way through uh, it's still making a way through the Rules Committee. Um, and uh, so in order to debate and vote on Rule 13 on the unapproved and or undocumented processes, we need state central committee delegates to vote yes to suspend the rules. And what this means is that this allows us to debate it. Uh, the background to this is that the rules were prepared and ready to go weeks ago. Um, and although the rules chair promised that these rules would be considered at this meeting, the chair did not call a meeting or the committee to finalize them before the deadline to get this approved by a majority vote. So in order to bring this up now that the deadline is passed, we need a simple two thirds vote uh, to allow debate to proceed. And this is standard procedure for things coming up. And this is because it's a rule not a actual bylaws change. So if you are a state central committee member, please vote yes to suspend the rules so we can debate this after it gets out of the rules committee meeting on Sunday morning. The other thing that uh, I would like to point out is standing rule 11, which is the rules for electronic meetings. There, you might've seen comments about, we hope that the committee has spoken with everyone and taken input from all the chairs and leaders. These rules are really not to protect the leaders. These rules are protect you, the state central committee delegates, and anyone participating in any of the caucuses or uh, the CD, CD committees. Um, these electronic rules are generally just a restatement of what's already in Robert's Rules of Order with a few things for added transparency. Uh, and they are to protect you and your rights so that you are not cut off in meetings. Um, as I said in the other video, we all experienced a actual state central committee meeting member meeting a couple of years ago where everyone was on mute. And so you could not exercise your rights inside of a, a uh, democratically run meeting because we couldn't speak. Um, these are the kinds of things that are, are um, uh, not allowed inside meetings. And what we're doing is restating them so everyone doesn't have to read the 750 pages of Robert Rules of Order in order to understand it. Um, and the great thing about this is that even though uh, we hear people complaining about things like a roll call vote, the roll call vote is not onerous if you have a committee of 20 or less. Uh, it just takes a minute to run through a roll call vote. Um, and then you're assured of how people voted. We were at a meeting where we didn't use a roll call vote. Uh, the vote was uh, uh, 
eight was uh, eight to eleven. Uh, and then afterwards, we realized that there was uh, actually only 18 people credentialed to the meeting. And so something was wrong with the vote. And we don't know how much was wrong with the vote because we didn't know how people voted. But a roll call vote just puts it out there so everyone knows what the vote is. Um, and this is a standing rule which can be always suspended. So if someone wants to dispense with a roll call vote for a meeting of 200 people, all they need to do is get a majority to suspend it and it's dispensed with. So very easy to address. Uh, it's not forced on anyone, but it's there to protect you, your rights. Uh, we hope to see you this coming Sunday, December 1st, at the State Senate Committee meeting of the Democratic Party of Oregon. See you there. If you see me at the meeting, please come up and say hi.